We're getting on the bus. We're going to grub. Let's go. Lunch at Fort McConnell. Hello. Welcome to Kansas, Thank sir. You What is cracking, Hope Nation? We're here at McConnell Air Force Base with some of my newest and greatest friends. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, what you guys go through here at McConnell and what McConnell means to you and why you are here in the first place. Okay, I'm here uh, to present my story of lived experience and lived expertise as it regards to suicide prevention, mental brain, mind, behavior, health, and the art of wellness. Um, and one thing nobody knows about me, <laughs> mm -hmm. I. I have this awkward fear that uh, my nose hairs that, that bother me are actually boogers. I just, <laughs> it, 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 it kind of happens to me all the time. I'll, I'll, I'll be with my wife, like, do you see it? Do you see it? It's right, it's right there. And she said, Kevin, that's another one of your nose hairs. Just, just clip your nose hairs. So there's my thing. I don't tell anybody. There it is. All right. So wow. next. Um, I have major puppy fever, and sometimes I go on Craigslist at night and look at the dogs that people are trying to <laughs> get rid of. <laughs> and one day I will get one. <laughs> I'm from California, and one thing that most people don't know about me is that I'm a little rough around the edges, but I actually have a really big heart. Aww. I joined the military after being a military spouse for about a year. Um, so I dragged my husband over here from Louisiana. Um, something that people don't know about me is, I don't know. You're sarcastic. Why is this? <laughs> I'm an introvert, but if you know me, I'm, I have this, I don't know, funny, sarcastic personality. So. Yes. <laughs> what brought me to McConnell is my beautiful wife. Um, yeah, her. <laughs> um, Something that people don't know about me is, well, she knows, but I hate pickles. I think they're disgusting. Oh, I hate those too. Thank you. I hate what? Pickles. I, I hate pickles. Oh, they're close. No. And unfortunately, she loves pickles. Um, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I came here because the Air Force picked Kansas for me, so that's where I am. Um, one thing uh, people don't know about me is every time I take my trash to the dumpster, I'm afraid a hobo is going to jump out and scare me. So that's just an irrational fear I have. Uh, I worked at a vet clinic for over two years just volunteering, and my dad, every single time he walked in, he would tell the person who was running the vet's office that whenever he took me to go fishing for the first time, uh, I'd kiss the minnows and then throw them back in the water and say, I love you, Chi-Chi. <laughs> I came here because uh, my sister was in the Air Force, or is in the Air Force, and something I wanted to do, I guess. And uh, my irrational, I have an irrational fear of like the ocean. Just oh, like sharks and stuff. Was like, it before or after watching Jaws? I'm sorry, I, I, think, I think that's a rational fear. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's completely rational Or the bay. You don't even know like, we don't even know like what's 50% of it, so I mean. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm totally, <laughs> digital fist bump is far away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally with you. I got in the Air Force because I wasn't really going anywhere in my hometown. It's a pretty small hometown, so um, it's one of the the normal stories. If you don't leave, you're never going to. So I decided to leave. And something people most people don't know about me is I used to be a barrel racer when I was a kid. So. Hi. So I, <laughs> Amazing. Yes. I am NCOC of Equal Opportunity. So we deal with unlawful discrimination, sexual harassment, um, just the overall workplace environment. I really love interacting with the people, getting to know what makes them who they are today, and things like that. And I believe we all have a story. So I really like learning what everyone's story is. What brought me to McConnell Air Force Base is AFPC. I did not have a choice. Um, something people don't know about me is that I'm like legit obsessed with the show 90 Day Fiance. Oh, so isn't it good? It's, good? it's so good. Like they have like two different ones, like before the 90 days and after, and I make sure to watch both of them because I need to know the story. I need to know what's going on. So yeah, that's, that's it. Bye. Um, what brought me into the Air Force? Well, first I will tell you, I'm the career assistant advisor here in McConnell, which is absolutely awesome. Why? Because we get to serve. Serving in capacity, that's much more than I've ever been able to do. I get to serve all of these folks here, as well as this entire base, on any kind of concerns they have with their careers, as well as they're just looking for some advice. So, what brought me to the Air Force? A higher power. 
to be able to serve. And I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do when I first came in, to serve the men and women that have come here today who have served before us and who will serve after us. So. Eric Powell. Nice. What don't nice. we know about you? Uh, You're not yeah. getting out of that. <laughs> I'm a closet singer. I love nice. singing in my closet. Uh, not in my closet, actually. But, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to I'll go over there to F Tech, I get in the closet. Uh -huh. Highway run. <laughs> in the car, especially in my truck, I'll turn it up really loud, but the window's got to be up. I'm the school liaison for McConnell Air Force Base. And I was a military kid. I was born in Japan, and my dad was in the Army, and then became an Air Force contractor. Um, I got here because I was writing grants for the school district and then this job came open and I loved it and I love working here helping families find their schools and what they want to do and something not very many people know about me is that before I became a social worker I was a research scientist and studied pancreatic cancer. <laughs> I have been in the Air Force for eight years. What brought me in was financial security for my family. I was married with a four-year-old, came in, joined it, got stationed here at Great McConnell Air Force Base. I've been here for my entire Air Force life. Uh, hopefully I'll get out in four years of McConnell, staying in the Air Force for my career. What keeps me is the people. I love taking care of people, I love helping people, and the people are really what make the Air Force great for me. Um, what a lot of people don't know about me is spit really grosses me out. Like she said, spit, spit really grosses her out. out. Like I'm try not to throw up. Just, just talking about it. Well, I'm from Wichita, Kansas originally, so I got. Yeah. Wow! Stop judging me. Um, I got out of active duty and I came back home. Thank you. Um, and what keeps me here is just the people, so um, I truly have gotten to fill a lot of different roles and all of them are focused around helping, um, and I just love that, so it's been awesome to be a part of that. Something people don't know, and honestly I am really gross to say this, I ate a frozen lightning bug for like a quarter. I was really young! I was really young! You did that last year! It was really gross. So now... <laughs> It's I'm really originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am uh, one daughter of four. Um, I joined the military because I was feeling pretty directionless and I needed to find a purpose for um, my life. And I've been in now for 11 years and it's been the best decision I've made. Um, I work with Sergeant Whitfield in Equal Opportunity. <laughs> to me, that's... I'm a little biased, but I think it's the best job in the Air Force. That's a bias, that's bad. No. <laughs> and something that most people don't know about me, I love to hear and tell dad jokes. What did the mermaid use to wash her fins? What? Tide. <laughs> <laughs> what brought me to McConnell's, I joined the military 20 years ago and um, just wanted to get out, do something, get out of the house, um, do something different. Um, I'm aviation resource management here. I work with a lot of troops, which is awesome because that's my passion is just working with people. Um, oh gosh. What people don't know about me is I flew a plane. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. But I don't remember the, I don't yeah, know with the airplanes. Uh, but I flew, I flew an hour because I got one hour flight time. <laughs> I sit behind a desk. So yeah, so it's it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that everybody. I really appreciate it. That was, that was awesome. Um, I think the highlight of that was learning a little more about each and every one of you. Uh, now I want to know, and this is for anybody at the table um, who wants to who wants to take this question first. Why does suicide prevention in the Air Force at McConnell mean so much to you? A lot of these guys here, especially the guys that I work with, are like my family. And if I were to lose any of them to suicide, that would that would be awful. And that's probably one of the last things I ever want to happen to any of these guys. They're my family. I care about them a lot, and to know that they were that low and didn't have anything, anyone to help them, what they thought, would absolutely crush me. So. Thank you for sharing that and being raw with that. That's really appreciated. Um, does anybody else have to add to that to that notion as to what what it, either what it would do to you, or or if you've gone through suicidal ideation yourself and you've come overcome it, or or even if you just. Uh, have an opinion as to how uh, we curb and, and, and reduce rates in, in suicide in the military and the Air Force? Um, before I was EO, um, I was in security forces, and at my first duty station, um, my flight chief um, took his life. And he 
it rocked our unit, it rocked our base. Um, the ripple effect for that is still felt. And the fact that he, um, he he's now buried, buried at Arlington, I actually went out there last year and saw his stone and still think about him. And the fact that um, his life means something to me and it will always mean something to me and that impact will forever be with me. But when we lose, even people that have been in our lives for a short amount of time, um, it does, it leaves a lasting impact. And that to me is where, um, sorry, um, this is so important. So. And my cousin killed himself when he was 37. And I just remember the effect that had on our family. And when I think about that happening here to someone that I work with and someone that I care about, it's pretty hard to think about. Guys, uh, we're not going to solve the Air Force and military suicide crisis at this table. We're not going to solve it in one day. We're probably not going to solve it in the next five years. But if groups like this become the center of an enraged public within the military, within the Air Force that says no more, and creates peer, peer efforts to make change, collectively, we can group with other Air Force bases, other military bases and operations to find new ways and new, new ideas and new out-of-the-box techniques to reduce suicide. What we are doing right now is not working, right? Let's be, if it was working, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. What we're doing right now, the research has led to things that are working in some pockets here and some pockets there. We need an overhaul of the system to understand how to keep us alive and here. And so, um, I would just like to pledge that you can all have my personal contact information, and I think that we should start like an email chain or something, if you don't mind, where we are funneling ideas to how to reduce suicide that are things that people haven't thought of. My wife and I are on the DOD Department of Defense Task Force for Suicide Prevention. We have a direct line to uh, the Director of Defense, and I, I want to I want to help be a part of the solution, but I am just a tiny speck in the sand, a cog in the wheel. You guys are the larger wheel because you're actually in the air, you're here, you're doing the work. And I think that um, if we can, if, if in my travels I can go around the world and work with the military bases with my wife, but then connect groups like this with groups from all around the world I've already gone and speak with, if we can start that rolling out, and start building ideas to keep people here on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. It can be as simple as being kind to someone like I needed on that bus, right? How many people could we reach if we just decided to reach out to five people, each of us a day? What if, what if each of you today, after this whole presentations are over, reached out to five individuals, whether you believe they were suicidal or not, whether you believe they're mentally unstable or not, or whether you think they, they seem like they've got it all together, and you just sat with them and say, I, I need a minute of your time, would you just chill with me for a moment? And they, if, if they give you your time, you say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Not because I'm necessarily worried about your well-being, but because I care and I'm a human being. Have you ever had suicidal thoughts? Are you having them today? Was today a tough day, this, this, uh, um, it's called turn down, what's it called? The uh, stand down. Stand down, pardon me. Stand, because today, today was the stand down. What if everybody in this seat, every, everybody at this table, went to five different people and said, hey, how did you feel about the stand down? Did it affect you in a positive or negative way? How can I help you move past it? And are you having thoughts of suicide? Have you made plans to take your life? Because if you have, I'm here for you. I'm going to sit right here, and I'm going to wait here until I know you're safe. Imagine if you all did that every week, once a week. And then imagine if you got everybody else here in this space to do it every week, twice a week, and then three times a week. How many, uh, how many suicides would we reduce just on this base alone 
if every single person in every different service piece of this base was doing the work to keep everyone here. Does that sound like a plan? I need to hear you. Does that sound like a plan? Yes. Yeah. And let's do it together because that's the only way to stop this is together, um, as I always said, without blame, without guilt. So thank you guys for taking part in this little experiment with me. I really appreciate it. This is going to be something we put on YouTube that's going to hit a lot of people in a really good way. And, and we're going to put it on different platforms. Um, some of those platforms are going to go pretty uber viral. And it's going to, your, your words are going to impact people that are, that are in Air Force bases all over the world. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, you're beautiful just as you are. You're perfect just as you are. You're a thousand times greater than the worst thing you've ever done. And if you're an airman and you're struggling, please text CNQR to 741-741 or call the National Crisis Tax Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255, plus one for military. Or please look to the person next to you, in front of you, around you, and say, I need help now. We want you to stay. We want you to be here tomorrow and every day after that. <laughs> I got your back, sir. sir. Yeah. It's just McConnell Air Force Base. Yeah. Not Ford? No, no Ford. Ford. I'm so sorry. You no, know, you're good. I got your back. I'm you're Ford. good. Oh, my God. I got your back. You're oh, my good. God. <laughs> I am so naive. I thought they all started with Ford. I didn't want to call Kev. No, no. <laughs> hey, you, look, okay, you gotta call Kev. If I'm doing it wrong, you're like, no, Kev. No. And it's not right. Okay, action. Shut it down. All right, three, two.